fast mode and 60, 70. What's going on everyone? My name is Adam and welcome back to Driven Nashville. If you happen to be new to the channel, we produce weekly enthusiast driven car content. We're at a fantastic location today, Percy Warner Park, Steeple Chase is behind me. If you're not familiar with that, go ahead and Google it. They have a massive event every year. It's a lot of but fun. Today we are talking about the new Polestar 2. This is a really exciting car. They had a lot of buzz, a big hit on their hands, I think, when this was announced about a year ago with the original Polestar 1. Now, if you're not familiar with Polestar, you know, I wouldn't fault you because let's be honest, if you're not if you're not a car guy, you probably have no clue who Polestar is. So this used to be a performance division, a racing division under Volvo, and uh, kind of like an AMG brand, kind of to Mercedes, you could say. But with the electrification of America and the world and all that, they decided, hey, let's make this its own kind of electric brand. And this is now their kind of a main car right now. So they had the Polestar 1, which was a really expensive car. It was like 130, 150 grand, right? They made 1,500 of them. It was a electric with a gas-powered four-cylinder turbocharged engine. This, though, is a full EV. Now, up until literally the Inflation Reduction Act, you could have got the $7,500 tax credit. Apparently that is now gone because this car no longer qualifies for that. However, this is still a fantastic car. I think you guys are gonna absolutely love it. We're gonna spotlight the exterior. We're gonna go through the interior. So stick around because this is gonna be a good one. Let's just start off real quick guys with the exterior of this car and you'll see some of the Volvo inspiration like I was just mentioning. You see it here in the Thor headlights, right? You see it overall in some of the design language, but just check out this color. This is a premium color. It's a metallic white, has a beautiful flake on it in the sun. We should get some sun here in just a second and I'll show you. But notice the panel gaps. Guys, Volvo makes amazing cars. Great build quality. Look at the panel gaps. I wish a Model 3 could do this. Unfortunately, it can't. And I just really like the handsomeness of this car. There's really not a bad angle. When you look at it in photos, it looks like a much bigger car than it is, but it's a, basically the size of a 3 Series BMW. So in the end of the day, it just, it just looks good. There's not really any bad lines on the car. I really like this design language they've done here. Here's your radar and front camera. I really like the Polestar logo. I like that it's color matched to the body. Really like these upgraded wheels. These are not the sport wheels. This does not have the performance package. I really like these uh, lights here. These lights also, when you come up to the vehicle, they have a fun little light pattern, which I'll demonstrate here in just a minute. Uh, love the roof. The whole thing up here has a nice full moon roof on it. I like that they went some black trim. This looks really good versus silver. So overall, I would say it's a good looking car. It looks futuristic, looks modern. The one thing to mention though, they put this little weird sticker on it here. Uh, every reviewer I've noticed has mentioned that and it's the only thing other than I think the headlights that mention Polestar. There's not a single Polestar brand on this entire vehicle, guys. Not one. I think it's mentioned in right here, yeah. So it does say Polestar Pixar, Pixel technology, but that is the only spot that you are gonna see a brand that mentions it, which I think is kind of interesting. You know, if you think about that real quick, guys, there is not a single logo on this car other than that little sticker there, which kind of piques people's curiosity. I mean, let's be honest, Teslas are everywhere now. Uh, I think they've lost a lot of their premium exclusivity. It's one thing when you buy a Model X in 2019 like I did, but it's another thing to buy a Model 3 regular today. It's like you've seen one, you've seen a hundred. This thing though, this has got that exclusivity factor in spades and I really dig it. And I also kind of like that they just didn't throw a bunch of Volvo logos on it uh, because you just, you gotta kind of inquire about it. You gotta go on the website, you gotta check it out. So that's a really cool selling feature actually now that I've been thinking about it. So, kinda neat. Hey guys, real quick, now that the sun has come out, you can see this beautiful paint. I gotta say the paint quality is exceptionally good on this vehicle. I haven't noticed any issues, blemishes, uh, just feels good and looks good. All right guys, let's talk a little bit about the wheels. So this is not the performance package. If you order the performance package, which I believe is $5,000 or $5,500, you, you would get the dual flow Olin suspension. You'd get nice, cool Brembo brakes that I believe are slotted uh, or drilled or, you know, they got the cooling technology on them. And then you also get an upgraded 21 inch wheel. But I will say these are nice low profile tires. They come with Michelin, uh, you know, uh, 
Supremacy Tour tires on it. Really, really great tires actually. 245, uh, nice uh, small sidewall there. And then they are all metal. Kind of a really good looking wheel actually. It's really grown on me. And then back here, you also have another 245. So they're same size tires all around. Really good looking. Though. All right guys, let's show you the front trunk here. Now, you can do it with one hand, but you're just not gonna use the front trunk in this car. So here's the latch right here. And you know, it's a pretty small spot. Uh, I think you can actually remove some of this and get maybe a little bit more space. And I actually don't think you can, cause this is it. So the front trunk is, eh, it's not like you're gonna be taking this thing to Costco and putting a lot of stuff in the front here. Um, but it's good to show you uh, at least, uh, and I really wish that uh, if somehow Rivian was able to design a system that was fully electric when you push the key. I wish other manufacturers would get on board with that, especially Tesla's, because I would actually use my front trunk if it didn't operate like a standard, you know, engine hood. All right, let's come on to the interior of the Polestar 2. And overall, this has got the leather package. This is an upgraded leather package, guys. This is a $4,000 upgrade. Really, really cool design language in the seats that if you're not paying attention to, you really wouldn't even see. This also has the ability to do the cooled seats. All this per perforation here allows these seats to be cooled. They're great in the summer. And, uh, you know, overall, it just feels nice, high quality. You do have a little bit of mesh here as well. I really do like the wood trim as you come on to the inside of the vehicle as well. It just feels like a really modern, airy place here. Uh, let me go ahead and turn this down, see if I can. Uh, that's the cooled seats, and let's see here. How do you turn the system? Right here? Okay. Takes a little getting used to. <laughs> All right. So take a look at the interior here. You have the Volvo turnstocks here, Volvo steering wheel. Feels nice, got good thickness to it. Really like the uh, this right here, just nice, nice, cool design language. Just reminds me something out of a, out of a you know sci-fi movie. This right here has got um, nice wood trim. And just overall, you have the Harman Kardon sound system. It's a part of the uh, plus package as well. You know, this is a little, you know, Model 3-like, you know, it's just not like Alcantara suede that you find in the Rivians of the world, but still nice. Of course, it just feels so airy in here with the massive moonroof. You know, back here, it is a small car, so I've got my seat pretty far back and I'll sit back there in a second, but you can see here, maybe not the uh, most ideal place to put six feet tall adults in the back, but I think you can make it work. Another kind of weird design feature here, they give you one cup holder, and then they give you another cup holder, but it's inside here, which is really weird. So you, yeah, you can put this thing all the way back, but then you've kind of lost your, your, you know, I don't know, it's kind of weird. And then here you do have the ability to hang something here, like an iPad or maybe a, I don't know, something small. And you do have a nice glove compartment actually um, lights up here. But overall guys, I gotta say the interior is just nice. It's modern. You have this nice 11.2 inch screen. You have another TFT screen here. Uh, just a good place to spend time. I don't think you're gonna find it to be premium, but I don't think you're also gonna find it to be a, a Model 3 Spartan. So I would overall give it a, a plus. And I also like that they've got gave you the same Volvo um, you know, air vents here, these look really nice. They're, they're self-adjustable, which is nice as well. I don't like to have to use my TFT screen to adjust things like that. All right, guys, let's come into the back here and, and show you. Now, like I was saying earlier, I had my seat pretty far back. I moved it up a little bit. I think I would absolutely still be comfortable here. So I've given myself a good inch. You know, I will tell you, let me go ahead and put myself on camera here. My head is touching the top of the ceiling, okay? If, if I was sitting fully up. Now, could I be comfortable in this in the back? Absolutely. This is not gonna be a deal breaker for me. All right, so if I had to roll with my friend and you know, I had to sit in the back seat, not a big deal. I don't, I don't feel cramped, but I will tell you that I also don't feel like I have, you know, this is still more of a compact car. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, but overall, let's look at the back because this thing does have a lot of practicality. All right, guys, the best part about the Polestar 2 or one of the best parts is the practicality of the trunk, okay? This thing opens up nice and wide. Check that out. You have a nice large space back here. You also have a 12 volt right here, which is very, very convenient. I love that. Check it out. You also have the ability to not only have a lot of space, but 
they give you some just really cool features. Like you can have groceries hanging right here. I love that idea. I would use that every single time. You know, you have a bunch of oranges rolling around your trunk, never a good thing. And then here, you also have a lot of extra space down here to keep maybe a gun or some charging equipment. So I love that. I also would use that. And then here, if you want, you can go ahead and push that. A little tricky to do, but not too bad. And look at the amount of space that you get back here. That is fantastic. So this is a, I mean, gosh, it just checks so many boxes for the daily driver category. I just absolutely love it. Check how much space you get. That is great. Here's another little Easter egg for you guys if you didn't know. If you push this, this actually closes the trunk and locks the car for you. So you can hit one button and then just walk away. Check that out. Here's the key guys, and I will tell you that this is actually a nice white cover that the owner bought aftermarket from Amazon. Otherwise, you got very little frills here, uh, yeah, as you can see. So. All right guys, I wanna talk a little bit about the infotainment system. This is often a selling feature and something I think you should at least be conscious of when you buy an electric vehicle, because this is really all you get. This is how you interact with the car. You have virtually no buttons. I mean, you literally have play, hazards, uh, this is your defrost and your gear selector. And that's it. So um, in order to go to the home screen, push this button right here. I'll take you back to the home screen. There's really no frills here with the home screen on this thing. Most of the time, especially if you're an Apple user, you're just going to plug your phone in. And I'm going to demonstrate that. Apple CarPlay was only recently added to this car. I think a couple months ago you had no CarPlay. It's funny too, because when I did the Volvo C40 review, the day I actually reviewed the car, it didn't have Apple CarPlay. When I was returning the car the next day, it had Apple CarPlay. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And then if you want to go, you do have a couple of standard features. You can turn off your trash control, which I think is kind of cool. It's called sport mode. You can also adjust the steering feel, one pedal driving, keep one pedal driving on. Once you get used to it, it's fantastic. I also like to keep creep off when you come to a stop at like a stop sign or a traffic light, you don't have to hold your foot on the brake. You get used to that as well, it's nice. You do have some driver assist features you can uh, enable or disable here. You can set your charge limit. It is recommended to actually set your charge limit somewhere between 80 and 90% so you're not using the full battery. Uh, the owner has currently got it at 100, but he's slow charging it off of a 12 volt. If you were gonna install a 240 volt, probably better off to move this somewhere around, probably right here for longevity of the battery. Um, and there's a, a couple of other cool things you can do here. You can adjust the exterior lights, you can adjust the interior lights. I do like the overall system. I think it's really cool. Uh, just simple, very easy to navigate to, and uh, it's not overly complicated. And one of the best things is this is all Google enabled. Hey Google, navigate to the nearest Jersey Mike's. Okay, Jersey Mike subs. This system, go. guys, works so good. Not only will it calculate where you want to go, but it'll also tell you where your, you know, your battery is going to be when you get there, and it'll also help you, you know, like for example, cancel this navigation and navigate to Bowling Green, Kentucky. All right, Bowling Green, let's go. Guys, Google's got it dialed in, I'm telling you. Now, the coolest part about this is it'll also tell you when you need to do a charging stop. Like, it actually tells you, and well, I guess it's added something here, but, you know, this is all really good, easy. It's as good as your cell phone almost, which, again, most of these systems aren't. So hats off to them. Um, it'll also tell you if you need to charge, and it'll also give you a charging destination. Uh, so it's just really good when you get used to it. Uh, I think overall it's one of the best systems. I loved it in the C40 because it's just so usable. Um, now let's go ahead and demonstrate Apple CarPlay. Aaron here is going to plug his phone in. Also, it should be noted that the, uh, the if you put your phone here, it actually charges it. This is a uh, charging pad. So when you plug it in, this is what the screen looks like. And from here, it's pretty much standard Apple CarPlay, although it, because it's using the orientation of the screen, it actually looks quite a bit better than most systems. I was just in that Porsche and it was just like half of it. Here's another little fun Easter egg with uh, this car. You see this right here, guys? That is something you could put a parking ticket in if you needed to, already built in. Real quick, guys, if you didn't know, you could hold this down right here on the system and it'll go into screen cleaning mode, which we're doing right now. All right, guys, we're driving the Polestar 2 here. First impressions, very comfortable seat. Steering wheel feels nice. 
Volvo, you know, a lot of the products as we've talked about, a lot of the, you know, turnstocks and uh, this right here is kind of unique to Polestar, but you can just tell there's a lot of things that are shared between Volvo and this, and that's definitely not a bad thing. You have quite a bit of torque, instant torque. Very easy to drive though. It's pretty quiet. The suspension doesn't beat you up. This is not the performance one with the dual flow Olin suspension as we've discussed, but uh, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Uh, this is kind of the ideal daily driver. So we're currently in Green Hills. Uh, this is gonna be more of a city drive. The regen, regen braking works amazing. Came to a full stop right there. I tell you, all the performance you could want, I mean, really, that was maybe 60% throttle and you're up to speed like nothing. So overall, I think as a daily driver on a first impression here, checking every box I could think of. I mean, it's airy in here, it's comfortable. You have all the technology you'd want, leather seats with the cooling. The owner went and spec that, which is a nice welcome upgrade. And you've got all the, you know, ability to store things in the rear, which I really love. It's just a, it's just such a practical vehicle. And I personally think it looks great. It's very modern and futuristic. And, and, and not in, in like a, like a cyber truck way, just in a normal, like you can take this to your parents and they, they give you the handshake. Like you bought a smart car, son, you know, like that's, that's the vibe that this car puts off. It's just smart, you know, and overall driving though, I I'm enjoying it. You know, if you've never driven an electric car, it's always difficult for a reviewer to describe it. You know, there's, it's just instant acceleration and they're, they're kind of effortless. Uh, and they just glide and you know one pedal re regen I just took my foot off the accelerator pedal and as you can see it comes almost to a complete stop I've had to touch the brake right at the end there keeps itself in uh, park and until you're ready to go and then off to the races it's underrated I've noticed everything on it is underrated range has been underrated really? speed has been underrated Interesting. Like it's like a conservative Swedish thing yeah, nothing wrong with that Porsche does the same things. Oftentimes underrate their cars. Overall, guys, I gotta say, driving it, you're gonna love it. It it just it just feels like the future. And you know, there's a reason why these electric cars are so desirable. And uh, and I I've really enjoyed driving them and reviewing them. You know, guys, when you come onto a main road like this, the amount of performance this car is putting down, I mean, you can get up to traffic in no time. And it just gives you a very good sense of confidence because you have all-wheel drive, you know? And, and it's just, I'm telling you, the driving of this car, uh, and, and like the Volvo, you know, the C40 I reviewed, it's, it's just, they just nail it. I mean, there's no rattling in the interior. Everything just feels high quality from the turnstocks to the sound effects to the steering wheel to the seat. You know, it just it is one thing that, yeah, maybe it's not as fast as a Model 3 performance. Maybe it's not as fast as the Rivians of the world. But in the end of the day, do you really need that? No. Uh, I would actually rather have a better build quality, right? I'd rather have a car that didn't have panel gap issues and didn't rattle you know, going over every little bump in the road. And this car checks all those boxes. And that is one of the things that, you know, I just wish you could get your cake and eat it too with Tesla, but unfortunately you can. And that's actually the selling point for this car that I believe the owner went, you know, he, he reviewed, uh, he went and looked at the Model 3 and he noticed all the issues and it's very well known even to this day i reviewed the plaid and that was supposed to be even better and it still had paint issues it still had some rattling on the interior so you know 12 15, 13 years of making cars and uh when you actually have a car brand like volvo who's owned by gilly and as i mentioned in the introduction all of that when they actually turn their mind on to making an electric car because they're a car company that's been making cars for something like a hundred years, they actually nail it. 
versus a tech company who's or you know who decides they want to make a production car right and you see all the issues so hats off to them uh the driving experience is wonderful now this is actually a decent road to test out the self-driving technology and i believe in order to do that you just hit that button right here and now it's self-driving now it's not full self-driving it's just mostly lane keeping if i wanted to go ahead and turn on the indicator here it's not going to do that for me okay however it will go ahead and steer for you which this will do it on a b road it'll also do it on the highway very very welcome it's going to give you a lot of energy back on those longer road trips it is coming up saying hey are you still paying attention I would use this feature all the time. I know with my Teslas I do. I use the self-driving and the lane keep a lot. Now, you're still gonna have to pay attention a little bit like there where the road kind of came in. But overall, if you're on the highway, it's gonna work great. It's gonna get you to your destination. And that's a welcome feature. You know, I was just on the Rivian, uh, that last review I dropped. Whoa. God, I hate, I hate some, you know, German drivers some days, but I was driving the Rivian and it did not do lane keep, right? So, you know, it, it does it on the highway. I will say that, let me make sure I, I get that right, but it will not do it on a B road like this. So that's a, that's a, a kind of a negative of that, uh, but the Volvo and the technology they put in here will allow you to do lane keep on just about any road, which very, very well. Just talking to the owner and, you know, he, he drove the Model 3 and, and I've reviewed it and, you know, it is very fast in a straight line. It kind of reminds me of, driving a classic car you know they're great in a straight line but they're kind of boaty in the turns and and this car doesn't feel that way it just feels very very sporty and very planted and now most electric cars do because they have the weight at the bottom with all the batteries but in the end of the day this has a better suspension and just feels like a more sporty car and that's just something that you know I'll leave it up to you if you want to go and test drive both cars but I think you're gonna walk away with that impression Having said that, the Tesla is very good. I drive a Model S, it does smoke in the turns, so the S is better, but if the, the three, even with the software upgrades, other than in a straight line, I think this is overall a more sporty, fun drive, especially if you get the performance pack with those dual flow Olin suspension, the bigger Brembo brakes, you know, I think that's gonna be a good Quick. time. If you wanna go, I mean, right there at 60 miles an hour plenty of performance in this car you're not gonna feel like it's underpowered yeah it may not be zero to 60 in three seconds like the tesla but who cares like really when do you need that that right there this that's all the performance you're ever gonna need that's still gonna make your passengers go "Woo, that's fun but it's not gonna make them throw up which i will tell you my model s i've literally had my mother-in-law, I, I thought after I, I launched it with her in it, I thought I was going to take her to the hospital. Like, she, she legitimately was sick. <laughs> and my wife, it gets the same way. So just keep in mind, you know, it's fun to go fast when you're the driver. Not so fun when you're the passenger. So I think this car really checks a lot of boxes there. All right, guys, let's have a little heart-to-heart -heart about one of the things that might stop you from ordering one of these cars. Because it's not a Volvo necessarily, or because it's not a Mercedes or BMW or Ford, etc., there's not a lot of service locations that are specific to Polestar. So here's the thing. If you live within 150 miles of one of their service centers, they will come and pick up the car for you and deliver the car back at no additional charge. If you live beyond 150 miles, they say charges may apply. Now, because the brand's new, I bet you you can fight them, and, you know, and they could probably come and pick it up for no charge, although their website does state that there could be charges. Now, because it's based on, you know, the XC40 and some of those similar vehicles as far as the chassis and the batteries, the owner told me that you can actually take it down to Cool Springs, in Tennessee anyway, to Carlock Motor Cars, which is the authorized Volvo dealer here. And as long as it's not a major problem, they should be able to help you out there. So I think that that's a good thing, you know, so you're not like you're gonna be uh, stranded if you do have an issue. So like I said, go on their website, look at their service centers. The closest service center to Nashville is actually Charlotte, North Carolina. The owner actually picked up the car from Charlotte, North Carolina and drove it back here. 
And uh, we are gonna talk one more thing as well, and that's charging. So let's get into that clip next. And one thing that's interesting about this car is most of the electric, uh, you know, areas of the vehicle were built in here on the EV6 or the, you know, built in over here. But this actually kind of looks like a standard gas tank, but it is not. This is what happens when you open it up. If you want to do DC fast charging, you have to pull this out to enable that. And uh, it's a big old honking cable, but I believe you can do up to 180 watts worth of charging, which will go ahead and take this car from about 10% to 90%, they say, in less than 30 minutes. Uh, you know what? I will tell you, every uh, supercharger I've ever been to or, or uh, you know, Electrify America Station has had a really hard time putting in more than, you know, 100 you know, kilowatts per hour or whatever it is. So I will tell you, you probably got to have a hard time getting that. Uh, but you can, which is good. And to wrap up on the service conversation, guys, it, it has a four year, 50,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. And the battery and the motors, the electric motors are covered up to 100,000 miles and I believe eight years. So somewhat comparable to Tesla's. And uh, you know, that, that's, that's pretty good. That's uh, I'd say pretty electric EV standard. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far to the video, we really appreciate it. You know, I didn't know what to expect with the Polestar 2. Uh, having reviewed quite a few electric vehicles, uh, feel free to check out my EV play playlist. You'll find everything from the Mach-E all the way to the Porsche Taycan, to the Y, to the X, to the S, uh, to the Rivian. I'm doing the Ford Lightning next week as well. So we've done a lot of electric car reviews. So how does this thing stack up? Okay. I would give it really high marks. Build quality, very, very high, okay? Way better than my Model X, way better than my Model S, better than the Model 3. On par with the Rivian, the Rivian was exceptionally good interior and out, okay? So build quality, very high. Overall driving experience, very good. Butter to drive, plenty of power, right? Not super sporty, it's not like the Model S, which just absolutely scares the heck out of your passengers. Not gonna quite do that, but it does just feel like an excellent daily driver. And that's really what you want from this category anyway, right? Interior, modern, comfortable seats. This has the upgraded leather package. If you don't go for the plus system, you know, you're not gonna get the Meridian sound and you know, you're not gonna get the moon roof. So you can downgrade the car, but I really like the package this owner went with. Didn't have the performance package, which I probably would have spec because I'm an enthusiast, but in the end of the day, it drove more comfortable than that one probably would. The brakes were great. So in the end of the day, if you're not into speed, just get this package because it's, it's everything you're gonna need and then some. So I would give the driving very high mark and I would give the interior quality very high marks. You know, it just has all of the things we like about Volvo and the Volvo build quality and the turn stocks and the sound effects and the infotainment system. All those things just are great and they worked. Um, overall, the price is really the only negative. I mean, these EV cars just aren't cheap. You know, gone are the days of getting a nice twenty, thirty thousand dollars car, right? I mean, you're gonna spend sixty thousand dollars to get this thing, and that's not a cheap vehicle. I don't care any way you slice it. You know, you're gonna have a nice eight hundred to a thousand dollar car payment a month. So. Other than that though, you know, you are gonna save money on gas, I guess. And I will also note, because this is a Volvo product, the insurance premiums, the owner was, uh, Aaron was telling me that, you know, he pays something like $400 a year for a $60,000 vehicle. Uh, so you're gonna get really good insurance premiums because these are considered to be very safe vehicles, even though it goes to 60 miles an hour in under four seconds, quote unquote. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something about this car. I sure enjoyed reviewing it. I think Polestar has definitely got a hit on their hands. I think they're going to sell as many of these as they possibly can. I went on their website last night, and they were very clearly saying with a big orange or yellow message that due to supply shortages, you know, we're going to be delayed on your, on your vehicle. So if you can get one, I would say go for it. And you know what's really cool, too? is that you're not gonna have a Tesla, right? You're just gonna have something that's different. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Really appreciate you watching. Subscribe for more. We do this stuff weekly. And a uh, big shout out to Aaron. Uh, you know, he was uh, he reached out to me and he said, hey, I got a Polestar and love you to check it out. And here we are. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Last clip here is a drone flyaway and we will call this one a day. I'll talk to you later.